Hi thinkers, welcome to the data structures in Java course on ThinkX Academy. This is module 2.1 where we are going to write a, a simple program to uh, rotate an array which is in the clockwise direction. And we are going to use reversing technique to be able to rotate and allow rotations in an array. So this is an important tutorial to understand the concepts of arrays which we have discussed in uh, this whole series of this data structures in Java course. So let's start with the program. So the program is to rotate the array in the clockwise direction. So what do I mean by clockwise direction? So let's say that this is our program and this is the main function, which is you can see here inside this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define an array and I'm going to insert these elements. So these are the six elements of this array, which is two, four, 56, 21, 43, and 77. So now what I want to do is I want to actually perform a rotation. Uh, what do I mean by that? Here you can see that I have a variable K and this variable K is equals to two. It means that I want to perform the rotation two times. So the clockwise direction, you can see um, my pointer here, this mouse pointer, and you can see that the clockwise direction is actually in this fashion, right? So just like your clock moves, that is the clockwise direction. So here in this array, you can actually simulate that using your imagination that if I want to perform uh, a rotation, what I will do is two will move backwards. So two is actually going to move in the clockwise direction and it will go here at the last position in the, and that is the first rotation. So while we're trying to do that, one thing we need to remember is that array has a fixed size. So if I want to move two to the back position, which is the last position, all these elements, which are except two are going to move forward, right? So that will actually um, give us an idea that this array has made a single rotation. And similarly, if I want another rotation, then four will come at the end and all the rest of the elements will move forward, which is in the left side direction. So if I want two rotations in this question, right? We will write algorithm which are going to perform n number of rotations. So whatever value you give here, it is going to perform those uh, rotations. So first things first, what is the desired result? The desired result is actually 56, 21, 43, 77. And since there are two rotations in the first rotation, two will come at the end. Then in the second rotation, four will come at the end. So here you can see that there is a very uh, clockwise direction rotation in this array. So the elements uh, which are from the starting till the kth position are going to get pushed forward and all the elements here in the array are going to come here at the first positions, right? So they are going to move left uh, in the left direction. Now remember that since array has a fixed size, we cannot increase the size. We will have to do it logically. We have to uh, do some swapping work and some uh, important task. Now the thing is, how can we perform this type of rotation? Now there are various strategies and I have come up with a very uh, intuitive strategy, which is to use reverse technique and that technique is very important. So let's understand how we can use the reverse technique here. You can see that I've created a reverse function which takes up the array. It takes a starting and an end position. So let's say this is our whole array, right? I give the starting position as two and I give the ending position as 56. What this function is going to do is it is going to reverse it, right? So two, four, 56 will get reversed and it will become 56, four and two. So uh, similarly, we can do it with any two positions. The question is why are we doing that and what is the, and how is it going to perform the rotation in the clockwise direction? So the answer is very simple. The algorithm is very simple. It says that if you want to perform two rotations, which is here, K, uh, if you want to perform K rotations, let's say, then what you need to do is you need to divide the given array in two parts. The first part will have the two numbers or the K number of numbers. So here you can see K is two. So the first part will have these two numbers, which is two and four. And the second part will be the rest of the array. So you are actually going to perform a logical partition uh, of the array in two parts. So the first part will have position zero and uh, as a starting position and four as the ending position and the rest of the part here here the starting position is at 56 which is one uh, sorry two because uh, it starts from zero so zero one two so starting will become zero and ending becomes the uh, the 77 so starting is 56 which is at position two and then we have 77 which is at position uh, n minus one now what is the idea the algorithm says that once you have performed this uh, you have performed this logical division which is by using starting and the ending position what you need to do is in all in both these parts you will have to actually perform reverse right so you have to reverse these two parts so two four will become four two and this part of the array will also get reversed now will it perform the rotation the answer is no there is a third part which says that once you have performed these two rotations which is on these two parts so k is two here so we will pick up first two numbers we are going to rotate uh, we are going to reverse them and then we will reverse this part also once that is done then we are going to perform reversal on the whole array 
right? So this is very important. And once you do this, this is going to actually give you the desired result, which is the uh, desired rotation, which is two, right? So let's see this in action. So we want to rotate, we want to perform rotation clockwise. And let's now write the reverse function. Now here uh, we have already started in the previous tutorial of this series, how to perform reverse. We have, we can use a temporary array, but there is one uh, intuitive technique to perform reversal. So let's say I want to reverse this whole array. The idea is very simple. I will pick up the first element and the complementary position is the last element. So I'm going to perform a swap, right? So two and 77 will get swapped. Then I will perform the same thing with this also four and 43 will get swapped. 56 and 23 will get swapped, right? So I will start from the S position, the E position, which is actually, which we are actually doing because we want to perform the reverse, not of the whole array, but also the parts of the array, right? So we will, uh, we will just apply this function reverse, the starting position, which is two first and then ending position. And then this reverse array is actually going to reverse these two numbers. So let's move on to the while loop. This while loop will say that, you know what, if S is the starting and E is the ending, we are going to start from S S will get incremented one by one and E will get decremented one by one. And we're going to perform this while loop until and unless the starting position is less than E, right? So if starting position becomes equal or greater than E, it means that we will have to halt. So first we will create a temporary variable and it will store the value of uh, the starting position because we're performing a swap between starting and the ending position. So now what I will do is I will swap the starting and the ending position using this simple swapping technique, which is assign the starting uh, position to the ending position. And now we are going to make use of the temporary variable to store the starting position to the ending position, right? Once this is done, we, I'm going to increment the value of S to point to the next number. And yes, we are going to also decrement the value of ending so that now we can do the swap of four and 43 and we will keep doing this 56 and 21 will also get reversed until and unless the starting position becomes equal or less than E. So this is how reverse function will work. It is a very simple and intuitive function. The importance here is that we are not using any temporary array. So it is actually uh, optimal in space time com uh, space complexity wise, right? So that's how we can perform the reverse. Now let's see how we can use the algorithm of rotation. In rotation, we know we have to perform rotation. Uh, uh, in rotation, we know that the algorithm will do reversal of these two parts. So from zero to the kth position is the first reversal. So you can see that I've written here, the step one is to reverse two arrays. The first array is from zero to the kth position. So it's from zero to the twoth position, which is here. And then K minus nth position, which is the rest of the array. So we want to do first these two reversals. For that, I'm going to make a call to this reverse function. In order to do that, we will first create an object of the class, which is rotate array. And this is the Java name of my class. So I will create an object and I will call the reverse function using this object, which is R dot reverse. I will provide it with this array, which is here. Then the starting position is zero as per the algorithm of rotation. And the second position is obviously K minus one because we want to uh, start from two and the ending position will be k minus one, which is one, right? So that's why it's written k minus one. So this function reverse will actually reverse two and four because we are performing the rotation from the, from, uh, we are performing two rotations, right? Now we are going to make another call to the reverse function, but this time it will be performed on the rest of the array, which starts from the kth position. So you can see k is actually two here. So it's correct here. We are starting, s will have the value as k, s is, s will become two. So this will be the starting position. And what is the ending position? Ending position is n minus one, which is here. So the reverse function is going to take this whole array, but the starting and ending positions are uh, 56 and 77. So only the numbers in this range are going to get reversed, right? So after this iteration, these two numbers and the rest of the numbers get reversed. What is the last step of the algorithm? The algorithm says that once you have done the reversal on the two partitioned array, what you need to do is just do a simple reversal on the whole array now, right? So I will again call the array uh, reverse function and I will call this on the array. The starting position is zero and the ending position is n minus one. So you can see the whole idea is very simple. We are just uh, rotating. The rotation will be performed and you will see that in action when we will run this program. And now what we need to do is this is the only part of the algorithm. Now we can actually create a for loop which will print out all the elements of the array using system.out.print. And this is the whole algorithm. So I'm going to make changes here. And now let's take a look at the, let's run this program. So it is, so that you can see that in action. So it is rotate arr.java. And here you can see the result 56, 21, 43, 77, two and four, which is the exact desired result that I wanted here, right? So let's see why this algorithm is working. We also want to, we are also interested in doing that also. So I'm just going to quote from the terminal here. And here I want to show you the things that are going in action. So this array is two, four, 56, 21, 43, 77. So the first part is this two and four. 
right so 2 and 4 is here and here and we have to do the reversal so the way to do reversal is very simple now we have 4 2 and the rest of the array remains same which is 56 21 43 and 77 right so this is the array after first reversal now we want to perform reversal in the second part also which is here so what i can do is let's uh, reverse on this part also so i'm going to rewrite the array 4 and 2 are here and now 77 will come here then 43 will come and then 21 and then 56 right so after reversing both the parts now we are going to get this and you can observe that if i will actually reverse this whole array i will get this desired result here right so if i try to reverse this you can, you can see 56 will come here then 21 21 is here then 43 43 is here then 77 it is here then 2 is here and 4 is here so that's the logic behind this so this is the whole program of performing a reverse and rotation so we are performing the rotation in the clockwise direction using the reverse technique. So uh, you can try this out yourself. I will give this whole program on our website thinkxacademy.com under the course data structures in Java. I will also give the notes related to this. So make sure to visit our website also. I will give the link to that in the description of this video. So basically that's all for this video. Make sure to like this video and also subscribe our channel because I keep creating these awesome uh, valuable educational videos for you guys. So keep supporting me. Thanks for watching.